Hi, my name is Jana and today I would like to talk about learning collaborative problem solving by playing digital escape room games and I'm going to be focusing on the current state of knowledge as well as examples of games that we have um, available that could be used for this purpose. First of all, let me introduce you to the agenda of this presentation. So I would like to try to answer a few questions. First of all, who is presenting? I'm just gonna give you a very quick um, introduction of who I am. Then I would like to discuss how can we survive in a complex world and how does collaborative problem solving play a role in this? Additionally, I would like to then cover how escape rooms could help with this from a more theoretical point of view. Then I would like to discuss what empirical evidence we have to successfully um, practice collaborative problem solving using escape room games. And I would then like to show you some escape rooms that are available, um, which could possibly help with this. So first of all, my name is Jana Oeke. Um, I have a master's degree in adult education and I am a current PhD student in education at Swansea University. Um, my email address is 215666679 at swansea.ac.uk. If you would like to get in touch with me, um, I'm going to show this email address again at the end of the presentation as well. Right, so moving on to the topic of the presentation, part of the topic. Um, so how do we survive in a complex world? So what we know is that we are living in an age currently where increasing, uh, where an increasing rate of changes to society is happening. Um, so this could be by introducing new technologies, for example, new ways of working, the um, pandemic has changed a lot of ways in which we work together, especially in the educational sector, where more remote and distance learning has been introduced. And all of these changes can cause individuals to feel quite overwhelmed with the situation, where they feel they're not quite on top of things, or they feel they have too much on their plate at the moment, um, or constantly have to learn new things, can never really, you know, take a breather. Um, this is an issue that we see and we have to develop the competencies of individuals to help them overcome the challenges of a modern world, essentially. Um, so the only way we can react to this in the educational sector is by equipping people with the skills that they need in order to be dealing with this um, well. So collaborative problem solving is one of the skills that is frequently mentioned as um, one of the skills that is vital in the 21st century for dealing with these kinds of issues. Um, so yeah, the co co collaborative problem solving is the ability to solve problems together with other people. And this is something that is increasingly important and also expected of many people so when you're applying for a new job or um, move into a new role or just anything really people expect you to be able to work together with other people effectively um, and what we can see is that in empirical studies teams which utilize more skills related to collaborative problem solving perform better and achieve better outcomes so what this means is that the, the skills that we're currently using to describe collaborative problem solving, they actually have an impact on the outcomes of teamwork. Um, so if we can improve these skills in individuals, this will also translate to the outcomes of their work and make them perform better. Additionally, it has been discovered that successful teams have stronger connections between the sub skills of collaborative problem solving. We're gonna cover them in a little bit more detail in a second, but this means um, for us as educators that it is better to practice these skills together and pr practice the connection between them as well, and not just 
um, rely on practicing the sub skills separately. So practicing problem solving individually, for example. Additionally, um, we can see that collabor collaborating with others can also increase our well-being. So it can be quite satisfying for individuals to work together with others on something, to share the same goal, to celebrate achievements with others. Um, so this is also something that is quite important just for us as human beings um, and can help us feel better as well. Right, moving on to just a definition of collaborative problem solving. There are more definitions than this, but um, so this is the definition provided by the OECD in their PISA report published in 2017. And um, this is one of the more frequently mentioned definitions. And you can see a few things that I would like to point out quite, que quite clearly here. Um, which is why I've chosen this definition for today. So collaborative problem solving is the competency of an individual to effectively engage in a process whereby two or more agents attempt to solve a problem by sharing the understanding and effort required to come to a solution and pooling their knowledge, skills and efforts to reach that solution. So the gist that we can take away from this definition essentially is that collaborative problem solving requires people to be competent in two areas. Um, so one, they need to be competent in the social area. So they need to communicate well in order to effectively work together with another person or more people. Um, additionally, they need to be competent in the more mental skills, the more cognitive skills. So they need to have knowledge themselves, they need to have skills themselves, and they also need to be able to understand the problem at hand in order to be able to solve this effectively. So um, the what we can keep in mind is that collaborative problem solving has a social and a cognitive sphere. Um, this is also represented in these skills here that were evaluated in the PISA study conducted in 2015. Um, so this is just a table that I've created based on the um, OECD report mentioned previously. And I just want to point out here that we can see that on top of the table in um, the gray color, uh, we can see the more social dimension to these skills. Um, so, for example, maintaining a shared understanding and the blue side um, is dealing more with the cognitive um, domain of problem solving. So, for example, representing the problem and formulating it. And what we can see is that they all come together then in um, these sub skills where it's always a combination of more um, more social or more cognitive um, aspects. And you can't you can't take them apart really. You can't just say, oh, I'm, I'm working on the, the collaborative part of collaborative problem solving today. Um, that doesn't cover the full complexity of this skill. So yeah, I'm not gonna go into more detail here um, on the sub skills. There's, some interesting discussions to be had around those for sure. But um, looking at the time, let's discuss how escape rooms could help with this. So escape rooms, um, I'm sure most of you know, are a recreational activity invented in Japan in the early 21st century. Um, they consist of themed rooms where teams of players discover clues and use them then to solve puzzles and to escape within a limited amount of time. There are variations to this, but I think this is the most common way of setting up this game. And if you see a game like this, people are um, pretty much immediately going to say, yeah, that's an escape room. Um, escape rooms have cognitive or can have cognitive visual auditory and physical puzzles. Um, so it could be any combination of them or just focusing on one of them. 
Um, I always think it's quite important to point this out <laughs> um, because in education we tend to focus on the cognitive puzzles a lot but there is also other puzzles that can be used for this purpose. Escape rooms target the four C's so um, the four C's are collaboration, communication, critical thinking and creative thinking and um, yeah this is something that has been said in the literature that escape rooms can foster these types of skills and they also relate to collaborative problem solving. Um, there can be varying degrees of difficulty, puzzle structure and also theme of the escape room. So you can create an escape room for pretty much every audience um, from preschoolers to higher education students or elderly people. Um, there is there's possibility to design escape rooms that match um, the requirements of your audience. All right, so what I think is the, the key point here that escape rooms inherently by design include the um, cognitive and the social domain that we discussed previously. So we can see here that escape rooms are played in, in teams. So this is, an inherent part of the design to have teamwork required for completing the room and the players use um, clues that they find to solve puzzles so here you have the more cognitive domain um, and they both come together they cannot be separated in, es in an escape room so yeah this leads us to formulate the hypothesis that escape rooms are or could be a useful tool to practice collaborative problem solving. All right, next up, I would like to discuss some of the empirical findings that we have on this topic. So a study um, called Escape Rooms for Learning, a systematic review, systematically reviewed literature um, on learning with escape rooms. The systematic literature review included 68 articles and um, Fotaris and Mastoras then found that escape rooms support both collaboration and teamwork skills. So this was something that was frequently mentioned in the articles that they reviewed. Um, and there was also an increase in motivation and engagement. This is also something that was very frequently mentioned and the skills of critical thinking, leadership um, and creativity can also be improved. So this was mentioned a lot as well, just not as frequently as the other skills. And um, about 20% of the creators of these um, escape rooms experience difficulties implementing their game. Uh, but all in all, I think these findings point towards the potential of escape rooms to motivate students and also increase skills related to collaborative problem solving. So collaboration, teamwork, critical thinking, leadership, those types of skills. So especially the more um, social part, the more social component has been mentioned quite frequently in the studies reviewed in this literature review. Um, next up, the next study that I would like to discuss is a meta-analysis of 33 articles um, that use pre- and post-test designs to review um, learning or learning activities in escape rooms. Um, and the studies reviewed have been published between those 2017 and 2022. Um, so Lopez Pernas found out that most of the studies were published in the context of healthcare and STEM. So this seems to be a trend at the moment um, that escape rooms are predominantly used there. They found quite mixed results. So some rooms report great improvements in learning and some imp uh, report no improvement at all, sometimes even a decline in learning. Um, the uh, age group, group size and format of the game had no effect on the learning outcomes. What had an effect in terms of game design was that the face-to-face -face escape rooms were slightly more effective than the remote escape rooms that were being played. Um, and yeah, the, the main takeaway here is that further research on the effect of game design on learning is ne necessary in order to interpret 
these mixed results a bit better. Next up, um, Fedkamp et al. published um, a systematic review on escape rooms in education. They reviewed 36 papers published between 2017 and 2019. Um, the majority of the interventions that uh, were looked at target sub subject specific knowledge, so not the um, skills like collaborative problem solving that we just discussed. They were designed as a standalone activity um, if they target soft skills to so not embedded in a curriculum. Um, and it is unclear whether soft skills are an outcome or a requirement for playing. I think this is quite important. Um, if we think about does the room actually improve these skills or does it just reward those who are already good at those skills? I think this is a discussion that um, we need to have at some point. Um, and the teacher as a guide for the game is quite important. And my main takeaway point from this is that collaborative problem solving is quite difficult to assess as a skill um, because it is so complex and because we have no good tools at the moment um, to properly put a label on the level of competency. Um, players need a minimum level of competence in order to play. I think we can all agree on that. But does the activity actually improve performance? That is the um, the great question that we still need to answer. One of the um, studies that looked at digital escape rooms in education, also a systematic literature review, um, was published by Macri et al. And the systematic review looked at 45 publications um, from 2017 to 2020. Um, Pretty much all of them were single case studies um, and they focused on experience instead of learning outcomes. So not measuring using pre and post test designs, but just asking people um, how they like the experience. If learning outcomes are assessed, um, then pre and post tests dominate as a form of assessing learning gains. Problem solving and collaboration generally improve um, if people look at these as their aim. So this is something that can give us a bit of hope that um, escape rooms can actually practice uh, these skills or people playing escape rooms can practice these skills. But research on this topic is at an early stage um, and we lack advanced research methods to properly measure learning in these contexts, especially when it comes to soft skills, which are hard to measure. So the key takeaway point here is that continued research with different methods um, and also in other countries other than Europe and North America can advance the field beyond its promising first results. Next up, Fitzpatrick et al. Um, looked at the effect of an escape room on professional nursing practice um, and they observed um, people playing on observed uh, people before and after playing using the team steps tools and um, as a result all 12 participants showed significant improvement in their team structure leadership monitoring and supporting other nurses the communication of this team improved noticeably um, which is also something that tells us that the the activity actually had an effect on their workplace practice. So this is something promising that tells us that this could potentially um, be relevant in other cases as well. And all players felt very engaged and would recommend the activity. So we have that element of motivation and liking the game as well. Um, so yeah, we can take away here that research demonstrates positive findings when examining collaborative problem solving training when using escape rooms, but currently the sample sizes are very small and um, the context could also have a large influence. So the context of implementing this game. So yeah, it's definitely a call for more and further investigation of these issues. Right, last but not least, I would like to show you three games that are currently available 
um, for everyone to to play and download. So these are commercial games, um, which could be used to practice collaborative problem solving. So the first game I would like to show you is Escape Simulator, developed by Pine Studio, which is currently available on um, Steam or other platforms for £16 and 79p. So not a free game. Um, Escape Simulator can be played solo or with um, two to three players, um, which is recommended. So the rooms work best when playing alone or with two to three players, but it is also playable with more people. Um, so the game lets you invite more people to your game. There are various themes available. So you can choose from the Wild West to space stations, um, there's lots of choice here and you can choose freely which themes you want to play. Um, there's currently no overarching storyline, so you just click on um, a room or a series of rooms that you want to play and then play these with your friends. Um, and the special feature that I think makes this game promising for education is that there is a room editor and a community community workshop available so people can download the room editor and create their own escape rooms and then share these with other people or you can also play games that have been created by other people worldwide or by your peers so for example um, you could have if you're using this in an educational context you could have um, everyone create a room with um, some other students and then rooms are being shared and then everyone plays all the rooms and you can give feedback on that so i think there's um there's educational potential here and the escape room experience is quite similar to um an education uh, to a recreational escape room so you get a more original experience and it's really suitable for every every player Another game I would like to show you is Escape Academy, um, developed by Coin Crew Games, which is currently available on the market for £15 and 49p. Um, Escape Academy can be played alone or with another player. Um, there are various themes available from ancient Egypt to a theatre, but progression is more linear here, so you can't just pick and choose um, any game that you want. Um, and the overarching storyline or the um, narrative of this game is that players are students at the Escape Academy where they learn how to solve escape rooms and uncover the secrets of this academy. Um, so the teachers have their own secrets and players can uncover stuff as they progress in the game. Um, so I think this makes the game quite special because you have that overarching um, storyline of learning how to play escape room games and how to play them well so it is the the goal of the game to to teach you how to play these and how to play better um and there are multiple game modes available as well so for example a, a tic-tac-toe um escape room version so people can get creative and play other modes as well if they don't like the traditional escape room experience so yeah definitely something that um could be quite useful for education as well and last but not least um, i would like to show you we were here um, which has been developed by total mayhem games and is currently or always free to play um, there's no financial transactions within the game um, so no hidden costs the game is free um, can or must be played with two players there's no option to play alone or with more players so it's a two-player game you can't select a theme the rooms um, focus on one puzzle per room and have to be completed in a linear order um, the storyline of this game is that players have been locked in, a sep in separate locations in a tower and they just have their walkie-talkies and then they communicate with each other um, to then escape so um, each player has one part of the puzzle and only through communication is it possible to achieve um, the the goal so escaping from the room this is also called a dependency gate where um, the progress of one player depends on 
the actions of another player and um, this makes effective communication essential which um, is one of the reasons why I really like this game to um, teach collaborative problem solving because players must actually work together you don't have that situation where one player is just solving all the puzzles breathe, <laughs> breathing through the game and lets everyone uh, leaves everyone behind so players must work together in this one and it's also free to play which um, is something that is really beneficial for education as well I think so yeah um, feel free to let me know what you think about this, these games if you try, um, tried them in your own educational practice or if there's any other games that you think are really helpful, let me know. Um, these are the references that I've used throughout the presentation if you want to check out some of the sources. And yeah, if you have any questions or comments left now, um, please feel free to send me an email at 2156679 at swansea.ac.uk. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for listening to my presentation. I hope it was insightful in a way and um, looking forward to hearing from you if you want to get in touch with me. Thank you very much. <laughs>